guys, welcome back to my channel. You know where we are. You know where we are. We're at Brett's Glute Lab with the with the famous glute guy. I'm so happy to be back. You know, you know, you've already seen the first video that we did. So today we're gonna do a new one, and today we're doing it for pregnancy training when you are, yeah, when you're pregnant. So to, in today's video, we will show you that you actually can train your glutes when you're pregnant. Can and should. And yeah, can and should. So Brett will show us some exercises that is really good for you to do when you are pregnant. Excited? Is that the plan? That's the plan. That's the plan. You see how tall I am? <laughs> <laughs> really tall. Okay, so uh, we will go straight into the workout first and then we're gonna answer some questions that we have for you. Sounds good. Is that okay? Yes. <sighs> Let's go. All right, here we have the barbell hip thrust. Now most pregnant women would assume this is off limits because you've got the bar pressing into the belly. But we're going to make some modifications to make this exercise doable. And I want to show you there's basically three modifications. So Hannah is going to come up to the top, okay, like normal, okay. So she comes up to the top. Okay, now from here, normally you would have a 90 degree sh uh, no. knee angle. You'd have a vertical shin, normally, okay. But I actually wanted to put her feet out a little more this way, like you did, okay? So the feet are a little bit out forward a little more, okay? Now notice, this bar is pushed forward a little bit. It's not pushing up against the belly. So it's, it's positioned forward. Now, she's not gonna go as deep, okay? So you go about here, come up, there. So it's little partials, okay? So again, you're not going as deep. The bar is pushed forward a little bit. The knee angle is opened up a little bit. And when you make these modifications, you can hip thrust all the way through your pregnancy, including your third trimester. Feel it? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And do you feel like it's pushing up against your belly no, too much? No, nothing. So you just keep it pushed forward and it's totally fine. Yeah, I can definitely feel it. Definitely feel it. Okay. <sighs> so that's exercise number one. Okay, there's also the band hip thrust. So Hannah's gonna come to the top, all right? And she's just gonna make sure this is positioned at the lower end of the belly. And then same thing, the knee angle's not, it's a little opened up more. And then she's not going as, you don't go super deep, just from right there, come up, okay? So these band hip thrusts work great in situations like this when you're pregnant. Uh, you just keep the reps high keep the band position low. Now, Hannah's doing this off my hip thruster bench, which obviously the band pegs make it so much easier to do. But if you don't have a hip thruster, you can just put dumbbells, like I crisscross heavy dumbbells and put the band inside of them. You can also do them in a power rack or off a Smith machine. You just need a large band like this and then somewhere to anchor them. And then finally, we've got the Smith machine hip thrust. So same thing, Hannah's gonna come up to the top, okay? And she's just not gonna go as deep. The reason why you don't go as deep is because then you press up against the belly. But yeah, just doing kind of the top half of the motion, knee angle's a little opened up, bar is pushed forward. You do not need to worry about pressure on the lower belly. If you do them like this, you just have to make sure I mean, use common sense. She can feel, like Hannah, you can feel yeah, whether yeah. it's, and I'm it's not pushing. I'm feeling every single rep. <laughs> but you feel in your glutes, but do you feel like it's pushing up against the no, belly? No, nothing yeah. on my belly. Yep. Yeah, I can definitely feel that. <sighs> and also, Brett has a really good video showing four different women who are in their tri the third trimester and how they actually train their glutes as well. It's a really good one. I will link it down below. Have a look at that one. Okay, next up is the good morning. So Hannah's going to position her hands on the bar. That's good. Duck under. She's gonna go high bar. Yep, back up. Get your foot position. Hannah likes a pretty moderate stance, that's fine. Feet straight ahead, that's fine. Okay, now she's gonna bend forward at the hips, keeping the back in neutral. And come back up, yep. So the good morning is generally well tolerated during pregnancy. 
And this is a great hamstring exercise. Uh, it's nice because, you know, when you do deadlifts, sometimes stiff leg deadlifts, for example, your belly can be in the way. This is like a stiff leg deadlift, but the bar is on your back instead of in your hands. Yeah. One more, come to the bottom. Notice here, this, the back is neutral and the movement occurs at the hips. She just goes until her hamstrings run out of flexibility. She doesn't go deeper than that, otherwise she'd round her back. Okay. Yeah, this feels really good, and I feel like when I'm standing a little bit, when I'm standing in this position, I have room for my belly. Yep. When I'm going forward. Yep. Perfect. Love that. Next up is the leg press. So Hannah is going to push forward. Okay, we're gonna push this down. Now, she's got to get a comfortable stance. So you might like a little wider, okay? Yeah, I want a little yeah. wider. And then as you come down, you're gonna flare the knees out there. Gives you some room there, okay? So leg presses are fine, but notice that Hannah's got a, a wider stance, and as she comes down, she flares the knees out. This way, the belly doesn't get in the way. Okay, so leg presses are generally well tolerated, and uh, you know, I of course like high reps on this, but don't be afraid to go heavy. Oh, Feel good? One. Yeah, feels really good. And yeah, as you said, when I when I push my knees out, I have room for the belly and for the breathing as well. Yeah, perfect. All right, now I'm going to show you sumo squats. So. This is a very effective exercise that can be done during pregnancy. And what Hannah is going to do is hold it this way. Nope, this, nope, no, nope, nope, like this, <laughs> like this. Okay? Like that, okay, 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 yeah. sorry. Okay. Yes. Um, all right, got, got it. it? Yes. Kind of angle it down like that. Get a wide stance. Right there, okay. Now what I like to do, just to make it more challenging, this is 50 pounds, what is that in kgs? 22 20, or something? Oh, 22, yeah, 22. 22 kgs, okay. You accentuate the eccentric. So let's do five, three, one. You're gonna lower it on a count of five. Mm -hmm. So go one, two, three, four, five. Pause for, nope, oh. pause for one. Come up right away. Okay, actually we'll pause for three. Five, three, one, I call these, okay? okay? Go down, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one. Oh. Up, jump the gun, okay. okay. One, two, three, four, five, pause. One, two, three, up, one. Okay, two more. One, two, three, four, five, pause. One, two, three, up, one. Last one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one. Okay. Love it. Wow. Good? Yeah. Only thing I felt was my glutes and my yeah. legs, yeah, really so good. So five Love second it. lowering, three second pause at the bottom, one second up. All right, now we've got the Bulgarian split squat. So Hannah drapes her back foot over the pad. You can use a standard bench for this too, okay? She's gonna try to get all of her weight onto this leg, so kind of lean over it. No, don't, do it. Yeah, that was good, that's good, but just mm -hmm. kind of like lift this leg off, okay? You could almost balance on there, okay? Once you're all balanced, this leg just is there for yeah. stability. When you come down, sink down at a diagonal angle, right there, come up, okay? Lean it, lean a little bit, come down. Now, notice if you dropped a string from the knee, it would end up lining up with the front of the foot. That's ideal on these in my opinion. Come back up, okay? Generally, I put hands on hips, okay? And you can kind of push the knee out a little just to give more room, mm. okay? Yeah, that feels, feels better when I yeah. push it out. Yep. And then this, generally single leg exercise are well tolerated, but everyone's different. So this, this might feel good for you, it might not. Does it feel okay? Yeah, I love it. Okay, so the Bulgarian split squat is a, another option. Right, next up is the seated hip abduction machine. Hannah's gonna lean forward. She's gonna shift forward in the seat. So move your whole body forward and then grab the uprights. Okay, shift forward a little more. Okay, start abducting. Good, okay. Generally, 
uh, I like to do a triple drop set of 10 reps, 10 reps, 10 reps. I'll show you what I mean by this. So Hannah is going to keep uh, using a full range. She's coming all the way in and all the way out. All right. You don't want to do half reps on these. Make sure it's light enough to where you can use a full range of motion. Okay. Once she gets around 10, okay, we're going to switch the weight, drop it down. Okay. Keep going. Then you get around 10 more. And then we'll drop the weight again for a final time. And then keep going. Okay. So most of my fitter clients, they start right here at 110, then go to 90, then to 70. And you end up getting 30 total reps. It burns really good. I can feel it already. Mm. Oh, yeah. Wow. Good. Glute loop. Really good. I got one the first time I was here. One year ago in March last year, yeah. I was here the first time and I got one and I carry it in my bag still today. Yeah, Yay! Made with love. <laughs> You're so cute. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is banded work. Abduction work, hip abduction work, using a band. Uh, Hannah's going to do a bunch of different things here. Just know that you can do any one of these as an exercise all on its own. Or you can do them at the end as a burnout, okay? So, first thing, hands on hips, just start going left to right. Good. So this, I call the lateral band walk. This is an option. If you have a large space, you can also go like, go three steps left, keep going left. Okay, now keep going right. You can go like that, or you can just stay put right there and just go left to right. Okay, from there, you can also face me. Okay, now get a wide stance. Okay, now just start inching your way forward. Okay. Now you can crouch down like that or not. You don't have to now back up. Okay. Keep going back and forth. Like now, that? Well, you can also go back up a little. Okay, from here, get a narrow stance, narrower, and then take zigzag diagonal walks. There, don't squat down though, just more forward. Good, okay, now back. Okay. Wow. Yep, okay, now from here, stay put. Bend over as if you did a Romanian deadlift, okay? Notice the shins are pretty vertical here, okay? From here, you go, that real quick, the last thing was called a monster walk, okay? This is called band hip hinge abduction. You're gonna cave in at the knees, cave in, and then push out and roll to the lateral edges of your feet, okay? Not, don't, don't squat. Kips, uh, bend more at the hips, stick your butt back. But okay. butt back and torso down, okay. there, okay. Knees, cave in, out. Roll to the lateral edges of your feet, good. Okay, this is the band hip hinge abduction. This works great too. This is a favorite here, okay? Now, okay, you're feeling pretty fatigued. Let me help you to the ground, okay. Lay down on your back, okay? Good, all right, lay down. Now, get a normal stance, okay? Now, from here, abduct as far as you can. Hold it there the whole time. Now do 10 bridges, okay? Bridge up, <laughs> yep. Now this is an awesome exercise on its own. This is the knee banded glute bridge. This works great. How are your glutes feeling right now? <laughs> They're burning so much. Okay, now stop for a sec, okay. Stop, good. All right, so we're gonna show how you can create, it, I, I do these, Band seated hip abductions where I sit down on something and I, I lean back straight up then lean forward but when I do group classes I don't have that many places for people to sit so I mimic it by doing this okay you're gonna start from there just do five abduction from here one two three four five if she wasn't fatigued I'd have her do 20 now climb up to your elbows there five more one two three four Five. Now go to your hands. 
trying to get deep. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now I want you to get on all fours. Okay, quadruped position. Okay, fire hydrant. So you're just going out to the side. Okay. Yep, just do a few reps, good. So that's an option. Now from here, do a kickback. So keep your leg bent, kick it straight up. There, okay. That's another option. Quadruped hip extensions. Okay, now stand up. Okay. Come to here. Okay, kick one leg back. Okay, kick backs. All right, now turn to the side like this. Abduction. A little bit leaning. Yep. Okay, that's another option. And then from here, this is called the cha-cha. Get down into kind of a deep squat, squat deeper. Let's get your butt back more. Okay. Like now, that? Take one leg, you're gonna go out of the 45 degree <laughs> angle, okay? 45 degree angle, yes. Yep. Side more. Out to the side a little more. There. Not quite as much. Back into the side. Oh my god. <laughs> <sighs> I'm out. <laughs> Okay. Wow, like all those as a workout. So use these Dude. bands. You can do these band workouts frequently. Uh, they work really well and they're underestimated. But abduction is very well tolerated during pregnancy. You can do this several times a week. Works great. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> my glutes are on fire at the moment. <laughs> okay, so that was all the exercises for today. And now I have some questions that you guys wanted me to ask Brett. Uh, and these are from my YouTube and these are the most liked ones. So we have six different questions. The first one is, how many different glutes exercises should you do in one training session? What should uh, be the order of the exercises? And this is in general or during pregnancy? This is in general? In general. Okay. Yeah. I like, okay. This is a hard question to answer because it depends how often you train the glutes. I like training glutes three times a week and I like doing four exercises each session. One of them will be a glute bridge or hip thrust pattern. That's like a bent legged hip extension exercise. So, you know, barbell hip thrust, Smith machine hip thrust, band hip thrust, single leg hip thrust, barbell glute bridge, knee banded barbell glute bridge. Even like a kickback would fall into this category because it works end range hip extension, okay? An the other exercise is gonna be a squat pattern and this could be one or two legs. Yeah. So uh, goblet squat, front squat, back squat, uh, Bulgarian split squat, step up, any type of lunge or split squat, okay. so you pistol. It's some one or two legged squat pattern. The next exercise will be a hip hinge pattern and that's gonna be like a stiff leg deadlift, a Romanian deadlift, a good morning, a 45 degree hyper, a reverse hyper, any of those movements. And then finally, an abduction movement. And you can do, as we just showed, there's tons of different abduction exercises. You can do some where you're more straight up in the frontal plane and some where you're bent over more in the transverse plane, but you mix it up. But I always do an abduction movement because that works the upper glutes more, builds that shelf. So in general, four exercises per session, a few times a week. And you mix like isolated glute exercises with like leg. Compound, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay, perfect. And by the way, when you do it like that, that works your whole legs. Because yeah. the squat patterns work your quads very well. Yeah. The hip hinging patterns work your hamstrings very well. And they all work your glutes. Yeah, and don't overdo the sessions. Yes. Exactly, yes. okay. The next question, question is, uh, are hip thrusts still working on the glutes even if they never feel sore afterwards? Yes. The answer to that is yes. Why would hip thrust make you very sore? You don't have a, a, think of when you're lowering into a squat or a lunge, you lower it real slowly and get that eccentric, the eccentric phase is really pronounced. In a hip thrust, you just kind of let gravity drop it for you. You're not like lowering it slowly under control. So it's not a big eccentric exercise and it doesn't stretch you to long lengths. You don't, it's not as much range of motion as a squat or a lunge. It doesn't stretch the glutes as deeply, so it doesn't create the muscle damage, so it doesn't get you as sore. Now, 
there's arguments as to whether muscle damage even contributes to hypertrophy. Some experts think that it does not and that it actually hampers you. You don't want to be too sore. You don't want to be training your glutes while you're sore as heck. You won't set PRs, you won't gain strength. So I don't like people getting very sore. In fact, most of my top clients don't ever get sore glutes. Okay. So it's totally fine. Soreness is overrated. You shouldn't actively try to be sore. Hip thrusts don't make you that sore. Neither do abduction movements, but they're very good to do. In fact, in my opinion, the hip thrust is the best glute exercise there is. So don't worry Agreed. if they're not making you sore. Okay, perfect. Uh, next one is heavy weights or uh, heavy weights and lower reps versus lighter weights and higher reps. What's the best for building glutes? That's a common, common, yeah, yeah. common question. I get that as well. Okay, so in the research, there's probably 25 studies now. And except for the very first study on the topic, uh, almost all of them show that they're equal in terms of building muscle. There's even a review paper on the topic now. And uh, it shows that both are equally suited for building muscle as long as you work out hard. Yeah. That's the caveat. When people do heavy weight, you have to work hard because it's heavy. Sometimes when people do lightweight, they stop the set when they could have done 10 more reps. Yeah. So the caveat here is that you have to push it close to failure. And most people don't, when you, they do high reps, they don't go quite to failure. It gets uncomfortable, they stop, they could have really done 10 more. So if, mm -hmm. if you work out hard and train, it, I call it effort, some people call it intensity. Um, if you go high effort or high intensity, you will build the same amount of muscle going heavy or going light. Yeah. Now, some people, myself included, think that doing a com combination of rep ranges might target slightly different pathways or mechanisms. There's not a lot of research to support that, but you might see better results doing both. That's why in my programs, I like to do some things heavy, some things light. Uh, you have a good mix of those. But the important thing to know is if you hate going heavy, like you just hate it, you don't ever have to go super heavy. Mm -hmm. You can do high reps you can and build them. still build still muscle build, yeah. just fine. You just, but you still got to train hard. Yeah. The, the, the thing is you always have to work out hard no matter what. Yeah. You can do that in any rep range and build muscle. Perfect. That's a good, good answer. Okay, uh, next one is, uh, do you have to be in a calorie surplus to grow your glutes? Okay. Common question, do you have to be in a caloric surplus to grow glutes? No, you don't. And <coughs> I battle this with people all the time because they're being told by their coach, you can't build muscle if you're in a maintenance or in, if you're in a deficit, but it depends on how, it depends a lot on what you've been doing. So when people come to me, a lot of times it'll be a woman who weighs 130 pounds or something like that, uh, or like 60 kgs, and they're, the, they're, they're a good weight, they just wanna improve their body composition. So I'll just say, keep eating the same. I'll make sure they get enough protein, like one gram per pound of body weight per day. Um, or actually 0.8 grams per, per pound of body weight per day or one gram per pound of lean body weight per day. It's, di it's different. So you don't really have to get, if you weigh uh, 130 pounds, you don't have to get 130 grams of protein. It's probably more like, like around 100, 110 is fine. Assuming they get enough protein, like going over that and protein doesn't build more muscle. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to go higher than that. So assuming they get enough protein, I don't toy with their diets at all. I just say, keep eating the same way. Then I get them way stronger. Yeah. Because they're weak when they come to me. You know, they might be doing hip thrusts with 60 kgs or 135 pounds, you know. And then in three months of training with me, they're using, you know, they're doing 225 or they're doing 100 kgs for three sets of 15. You know, I get them way stronger. Obviously, they're going to grow their glutes. Yeah. So it depends how fit you are, how strong you are. There comes a point where you're very well trained where, yes, you should kind of bulk and cut a little bit. I don't like when people bulk, do these crazy bulks and crazy cuts because no. they're not happy with the way they look. Exactly. If you're a competitor, maybe, but if you're just a normal person, just stay the way you yeah. like to look you most keep, of the time. You can keep a, a balanced, uh, like nutritionist plan. Yeah. And then train. And just train right. hard yeah. and just keep your diet very similar throughout the year. Yeah. So yes, you can grow your glutes. Even if you're at maintenance, it's called recomping. 
I do it all the time with my clients, but you have to get stronger. The stronger mm -hmm. the glutes, the more muscle they're yeah. going to have. Yeah, and also when you push yourself and you become stronger, the, f the body needs more food, like on the way. There. Yeah, because yeah. you're burning yeah. more calories during the yeah. workout, you're using more energy to repair muscle. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Next one is, uh, is it really possible to change the shape of your butt? Okay, well obviously because, you know, when you're untrained, it's like a flat, you know, muscles are flatter yeah. and then... You don't have the muscle grow, tissue on Well, they grow more in the, in the center, the, yeah. they bulge more in the muscle belly, so it gets rounder. That's, they will always get rounder. So, in that case, yes, you can change the shape of the glutes, and I have tons of testimonials. You can go onto my Instagram and you see tons of women who had flat butts and then they had round butts yeah. after a couple of years of training. But there are certain, gen you know, a lot of how your butt look is ultimately going to look is determined by genetics. Yeah, you know, I get the all these hip, hip, um, hip dips, hip dips or and hip stuff divots. that people like, always talk about. Yeah, yeah, people always talk about that. And that, that's how, go to, type in onto Google, Ronnie Coleman glutes. And you'll see this crazy, they look like a butterfly. Yeah. The glutes look like a butterfly. Yeah. Okay. Because you got the glute medius and the upper glute max and then the lower glute max. And it, it goes like this. You have to have those divots if you have well-developed glutes. There's no yeah. way around it. Some people hate the way they look. There's a genetic aspect to that. In fact, a lot of Asians I've noticed, they, you feel their glutes, they, have, they actually have a lot of glute muscle. The glute muscle is thick, but it doesn't pop out a lot. And I think that has to do with the sacral slope. Their sacrum is more flat and it doesn't angle out yeah. as much. So a lot of how your butt is going to look is predetermined by your skeletal anatomy, but you can improve the shape of it. You can improve the roundness. So yes, you can change the shape. Cool. Nice. Last one is, uh, what are the glutes exercises someone with a back issue can do? Okay. Someone with back issues, what glute exercise should they do? Okay. If you do hip thrusts the way I teach them, where you look forward, mm -hmm. uh, you, you, at the top of the movement, the chin is tucked, you move mostly from the sternum down, you post your pelvic tilt, that's very well tolerated, okay? You so, learned me how to do that, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we did that last year, yeah. okay? So hip thrust variations are very safe. Single leg variations, everyone can do, you know, lunges, Bulgarian split squats, step ups, those are well tolerated. And then also single leg RDLs, um, back extension variations like 45 degree hypers, dumbbell 45 degree hypers, uh, those are well tolerated. Now, but and then abduction movements, of course, those are a staple. Yeah. Hip, all hip abduction movements, so like lateral band movements, a seated hip abduction machine. Now, you still can squat and deadlift. You just have to make sure you keep your spine in neutral, and that's the problem with a lot of people mm. who get back issues. They're not. They're moving a little too much at their low back. Maybe they're squatting too deep and they butt wink. Maybe they deadlift a little too heavy and they end up rounding. Or they're doing like reverse hypers or even hip thrusts and they hyper extend. So take the time to learn about keeping the spine in neutral and moving at the yeah. hips instead of moving at the spine and you know you can create problems there. But you shouldn't fear these exercises. You just have to learn the right variations and the right form and learn the right cutoff point where you don't push it past this point and you yeah. stay and it's fine. Yeah. You get you get good of what you what you are training with, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you nobody is good from the beginning, you have to start somewhere and you have to improve all the time. And it changes over time like you know, two of my favorite exercises in my 20s were weighted dips and weighted chin-ups. I can't do those anymore. They hurt my shoulders, so I don't do them anymore. Um, but you know, you know, every decade, if you keep lifting, you're going to have new challenges, and you got to yeah. work around it. But you're all, you can always get a good workout, and you can always go to the gym, even if you have some sort of injury. You can still train around it. Perfect. Great. That was all the questions that we had today, guys. I really hope that you liked the answers, but I know you did. I know you did. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stand on my toes. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. We really hope that you liked the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I will link Brett's both Instagram and YouTube below. Go in and follow because you, you will never find a better person to train, how, to, to, learn, to learn you how to train your glutes. 
that was what I was supposed to, to say. To teach you how to train the glutes. To teach you how to train your glutes. You will never find a person better than him. I'm telling you this. I love you. Love I you love too. You. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye.